So we're absolutely thrilled you could join us, Daniel. Thank you for coming and um, showing us your music and talking about it. Um, sure, sure. And I'm sure they're going to all absolutely love hearing about it. So well, whenever well, you're ready. All right. Well, let's get, yeah, let's get started. Let's get started. Um, first thing is, um, I don't know about you, but it is hard to be held in captivity. I couldn't imagine being your age in this age right now. And the first thing I want to do is say thank you. We're going to think about each moment of every day. And the antidote to all the ills of the world, I think, is making music. This is Filter. It's my way of thinking about uh, Prince that great American virtuoso, and Paganini, that great Italian virtuoso. I hope you dig it. want to talk to you tonight about where you are, where you might want to be, how you're dealing, um, and how the arts plays in your life. I'm never going to ask you to do something I won't do myself. Um, I want to give you some tips and tools for dealing with what I call your frame. This is your frame and perspective. Some of these are my thoughts. Some of these aren't my thoughts. So imagine if this was you and I right now, you know, like actually thinking about scale because What's great about Zoom is you can talk about scale. So right now, you're this beautiful steel water bottle. And if I'm thinking about where you are right now in proximity to me, this is where you are. I want you to be front and center, right? For those of you who ever take, have, have ever taken a Schenker uh, theory, you're the foreground, right? I want you to be in the foreground. Now, eventually, we'll be side by side, right? We'll be right next to each other. But I also want you to think about Who's behind you, you know? Brothers, sisters, first teachers, who's way in the background that you're still thinking about? Right now at this moment, I'm thinking about Mr. Hieronymus, Mr. Miller, my first music teacher. I'm 49 years old, and I can tell you how many things I can remember when I was four years old, five years old, six years old. I'm thinking about Mr. Miller. 
And even though he's way in the background there, every now and then, even when I'm talking to you right now, when I'm thinking about playing for you right now, he comes into the foreground, okay? So I want you to think about um, your frame. Right now, for all of us, our frames tells us a little bit about who we are. And you have autonomy over your frame, right? It's not a place of captivity, it's a place of um, imagination, right? So particularly in Zoom and in any platform, you know, I don't particularly like Zoom, but so much of what I have to do deals with Zoom. You know, it depends on how I'm feeling. So if I'm feeling like I want to have this kind of a background, which is from a solo piece I did um, with a graphic artist, that's great. I can show you uh, this is a live workspace that I run out in Arizona. Um, I'm sometimes known as DBR. Um, I think about Prince all the time. And, um, you know, I think right now, well, this is where I'm living. Uh, this is a home that I have in Boston, not too far from many of you. Aiden, how are you feeling? I'm good. How are you? All right. I'm fine. What instrument do you play? I play the viola. Ah, yes. You know, a lot of violinists, we aspire to be violists. Did you know that? That low C. Woo! That low C. It, it's I, a fun time. Yes, it's a fun time. How long have you been playing? Um, I, I originated on the violin and then switched to viola, uh, in like in seventh grade, but I, oh, I was playing excellent. the violin since like third grade. Excellent. How many pizzicatos do you have? I, I have no idea. <laughs> well, you have at least one, right? Pizzicato. Then there's the Bartok pits, right? So you have, I'm sure your teachers I'm, and, then, and then anything I'm going to say tonight, it's not interfering with what you've learned. You know, learning is just about um, experience. You know, education is just the, um, the expression and articulation of life experiences in a precise and um, bilateral manner, right? That's education. We're all educators. So anything I'm going to say tonight is just my life experience. But you have at least one pizzicato, right? Probably flesh of the finger. Then there's the Bartok pits, right? Right? Any more? Yeah, I've been thinking about pizzicato a lot. I have about, I don't know, 30 different pizzicatos. So one is, um, let's see, I do this, like it's, I call it, um, it's like a Sade pits. A uh, Sol Ponticello pits. Phaser pits. I've been working on this phaser pits. Can you hear those overtones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeling like a phaser? Yeah, I've been working on a wild pizzicato, a wild vibrato pizzicato pits. <laughs> A bass pit. It's really, I'm, I'm really focusing on how much buzz there is behind it, right? I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, so different kind of pits. Is. I think this is a time for discovery. Right? This is a time for imagination, and this is a time for, in some ways, to even think about failure. I'd love to share my screen with you right now. And the reason I talk about failure is because there are days where I feel defeated. Let me drink some water. I feel defeated. I feel as though I'm not being, I'm not able to be my full self. Right? So I want to share my screen. I'm going to take you through a, a little presentation. I just want to share with you right now, and then I want to know what you think, right? A time for questions and comments. You should always have a question. You should always have a comment. Even now, let's stop. Any questions or comments? Any, what are you thinking? What are you thinking when you hear my violin? See, I don't think it's the violin. I think it's my violin. There's a difference. My violin is not subject to tradition. I see tradition as an old innovation waiting patiently to be made new again. Pizzicato is a tradition that I don't own, right? Pizzicato is a tradition that I have to learn and come into. But the way um, 
oh, I'm going to date myself here. <laughs> you know, the way Monkey from um, Corn or you know any of the Bootsy Collins. There's so much happening that bass players do that I also want to adapt to my way of playing the, the the violin. Great guitar players, you know, even this notion of um, even that, that that notion of muting. In other words, I, I wouldn't just go. I might. But uh, this is kind of a pizzicato comping, right? Right, so there's so many ways that you can approach your instrument. How do you approach your instrument? Maggie, how do you approach your instrument? Hello, nice to meet you. I see you. Yes, great shadow. That's a nice. That's that's yeah. See that? See that shadow right there? That's great. You see? You see what I see, right? See the shadow mm -hmm. behind you? That's great. I love. That's really purposeful lighting. So Maggie, what instrument do you play? I play the violin. Oh yes. Oh sorry. Yes, we're all equal in the orchestra. <laughs> Even though we're not, no, just kidding. Uh, what do you do with your violin? That is, well, what do you like most to do? What's the most interesting, fun, best part of it for you? Um, I mean, I'm the only one in my family that plays an instrument, so okay. it's like a way to like escape in a way, because no one really understand. It's like it. I don't know. It makes me unique from my family which I kind of like. I love that. I love that. In the chat, we should write that down. Escape. Um, I heard escape, escape from my family, unique. These are great. Anyone can just dive in. That's another way we can communicate. I think the, the you know, it's, it's going to be very easy as an artist and as a human being to identify the problem, right? To identify the things that are, that are uh, not right, that are wrong. As artists, let's try to focus on possibility right opportunity in fact this year actually last year i started saying whenever i'm going to use the word problem i'm going to stop myself and use the word opportunity right there's an opportunity here so i think Ma what maggie says is really important she feels unique when she's playing the violin it's an escape in this environment we can we can have simul multi we can have overlapping conversations happening at one time Right, unique um, escape. So great. Uh, let's let's tag. Let's see, Maggie, pick someone that you'd like to hear speak. Go ahead, Maggie. Megan. Who's next? Megan. Where's oh? There's Megan. Megan. Yes, unmute. Let's all get everyone on mute. Give a hand to Megan. Applause. <laughs> Scientifically proven to improve your mood. Did you know that? That percussive sound. Yeah, yeah. Megan, how are you? Pretty good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. What instrument do you play? I play cello. Cello. Yes. Give it up to the cello. Mm, love cello. I play six to seven, seven string instruments just to get into that range, by the way. It's awesome. What do you like most about your instrument? I just like that it's, I don't know, kind of like what Maggie said. It's different. And a lot of people in the orchestra play like violin and stuff. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's different than a lot of other people. Ah, oh, different than a lot of other people. Yes, I know. So filtering was a piece I just played for you. Filtering has to do with the way I move my bow. Um, it's a technique I developed, I don't know, many, many years ago. And um, it has to do with, uh, well, not wanting to be um, held captive by Sol Ponticello or Normal playing. <laughs> Specifically, filtering has to do with moving the bow as I play. So 
filtering has to do with moving the bow as I play, and it's a technique that I developed because I wanted to make my acoustic instrument have those kind of almost electrified po um, pro properties. It's also a way that I kind of feel about the way I move through life, that I'm co in constant motion, and that when failure happens, when I'm in a place where I can't control, what do you do? How do you move out of it? How do you filter out of it? You know, I was online like you, I don't know, a few weeks ago, right when this pandemic started, and somebody wrote, you know, day one, exclamation point, I'm not going to make it. You know, almost like a little funny sign. Day one, actually it was day one, question mark, exclamation point, I'm not going to make it. And I put into the comments, Mandela. And you may be too young, but the point I was trying to make was that Nelson Mandela spent over 20 years, I think close to 25 years, in a cell. Very limited, you know, total loss of freedom, very limited um, movement, you know. And then the, the real um, kind of terror of it, the real um, inhumanity of it, was that his cell overlooked um, uh, land and the ocean. And the, uh, he had a beautiful view. That was done purposefully. A beautiful view from this prison cell. Yeah. So I want to talk about frames and photographs and Margate, Florida. Although I'm in Norwood, I grew up in Margate. I was born in Chicago. Both of my parents are Haitian. So Margate, I am a black Haitian American composer. I think it's very important that you define yourself. If you don't find yourself, someone else will. You're not just your name, comma, your instrument. You're something more than that, right? Tell me something about you in a few words. I am a black Haitian American composer. This is my family. This was my family. I was born in Skokie, Illinois, but moved to Margate, Florida. I started playing the violin when I was five years old within the Broward County public school system. I didn't know what I was doing with the violin, and I didn't really care. It was fun. It was an adventure. For my mother, it was a small, mandated part of my larger, mandated education. My sister stopped playing. My dad died on April 22, 2013, at 1.07 p.m. He's gone, but I'm still playing the violin. And it's how we talk now. Oh, so sorry. Here we go. Make a decision, but enjoy the choice. Two, avoid making lists. Three, remember the stories you love so that you can tell them to someone you love. My first music teacher once said to me in the middle of a music lesson, Danny, you have to decide if music is going to serve you or if you will spend your life serving music. I didn't know then what he meant, but today I understand. I'm going to spend my life serving music. Five, Mr. Miller, my first music teacher, was getting at the idea of selflessness, of trying to have this five-year-old student understand the responsibility of service and sight, vision, and giving freely to someone or something else. You know, education is the one place you can be simultaneously selfish and selfless. Yeah. This is... Uh, Daniel Remain, Tad, 10 years old. <laughs> Zachary Remain, son, 10 years old. Okay, let's admit it. He wins. <laughs> he wins. Okay, he is a good-looking young boy. I was a young boy. <laughs> okay. Six, remember names, because when someone forgets yours, it stings. Thinking about Connor right now. Connor! I remember the first time my first girlfriend called out my name from the other side of a crowded room. Danny! It made me feel invincible and that I was part of something real and private and precious. She's married now to another man. They have two children, and we are still good friends. Oh, yeah. In fact, one of her children came to one of my concerts. I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. And this will happen to you. Mm. I decided to become a musician and never had a backup plan. Those plans never really worked for me, and I always avoided making them. That's me. Nine. You'll find it's sometimes better to focus on dreams more than desires. But no, dreams aren't goals, and goals aren't plans. It begins with work. Your daily work supports your plans, which supports your goals, which leads to your dreams. We'll talk about, we'll talk about that more a little later. 
Oh, wow. Here we go. Look at the hair of the 80s, you all. Yes. Put this right down here. When I was a teenager, I started playing football. For years, I played football and violin. I loved them both and wanted to play both professionally. I developed a plan, did some research, and was dedicated to long practice sessions with my team and long orchestral rehearsals at school. I wasn't the only child trying to be a student musician athlete, and I was fortunate enough to be surrounded by teachers, family, and friends that supported my dream. But by high school, it was clear to me I couldn't continue to pursue these separate but related dreams. I had to make a choice. No, I didn't fail at football. I simply chose to stop playing, but it didn't feel that way as a teenager. It felt like failure. You dig? I felt like a failure. You dig? And it hurt. It took many more years to realize that the success of that decision and the importance of making and embracing that change was the first step towards the development of a new skill, of analysis, decision, change, and reflection. You know, in football, a sign of respect is to take a knee. You dig? A sign of respect is to take a knee. And I think about that when sometimes I'll play the national anthem and I take a knee because I want you to understand the validity of who you are right now, the validity of the music you're making right now. I'm not concerned about how well you play in tune or your rhythm or these things that are so important but not the most important thing. The most important thing, I think, is that you understand and love and appreciate who you are, right? All right. One day, when I was young, I saw a family of ducks in the canal near my home. It was a mother duck and a dozen or so ducklings. I decided to throw stones at them just to see what might happen. I really didn't mean them any harm, but I really wasn't thinking about the consequences of what was at that time a game to me, 10 years old. One of the larger stones struck one of the ducklings, breaking its neck. It struggled in the water for a few minutes, turned to its side, and died floating on the water. The entire time, the mother duck tried her best to do what she could, but she really couldn't do anything but make this sound, a painful, mourning, awful sound. The entire time, the mother duck tried her best to do what she could, but she really couldn't do anything but make this sound, a painful, mourning, awful sound. And when it was all over, that mother duck looked right at me and felt silent and stared. I ran, crying. And afraid. When I was young, I didn't think about the consequences of my actions. 12. Fear can be a wonderfully motivating tool. It all depends on its application and use. 13. I'm a composer because I was more afraid not to be. 14. I attended Vanderbilt University and was struggling in my first semester to keep up. I just couldn't find the time. I decided to go to the Career Services Center and asked to meet one of their counselors. I met this young man, not much older than me, and began to tell him all of my problems. He listened carefully and didn't say a word. When I was done, he took out this blank piece of paper and told me to write down everything that you do today, hour by hour, be honest and precise. The next day, account for every hour of every day. The whole meeting took less than five minutes. I left and began writing down my day, hour by hour, as he had insisted. The truth was, I discovered I was taking three-hour lunches, two-hour phone call conversations, and we would spend four hours drinking with friends. I was wasting time. The next day, I created a schedule, accounting for every hour of that day. That day was the first day I felt in control of my education. 
I finished that semester not only with great grades, but with a great attitude, an improved perspective on the preciousness of time. I don't remember that young man's name, but he changed my life and how I use and value my time. I was never going to be that type of violinist, the violinist that could play Bach and Brahms and Beethoven really well. My hands refused to listen. They heard Jimmy and Eddie and Prince. They wanted to collaborate with singers and dancers beyond symphonies. Lady Gaga and I agreed to work with one another for our American Idol debut. We both agreed that the violin needed to dance with us. And let me stop there, because that's a lot. It's good to be back here with you. Let's unmute. What did you hear? What did you think? What are you feeling? Alexis. Hello, Alexis. How Hello. are you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can all hear you. How are you feeling, Alexis? I'm a little in shock with the doc story, not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> right. and, and I'm glad that you said that because I'm still thinking about it. And you have to understand the vulnerability of not just thinking about it, but writing it down, right? And putting it in there and sharing it with you. But please continue. What, what was shocking about it or what, what's going on there? What do you mean by that? I don't know. Just like the thought of like how the mother felt and then like you playing the sounds on top of it kind of just made it like more real, I guess. Yeah. Yes. And you know, when we hear, I don't want to lie to you. I don't know if life gets better. I'm sure you've heard this, right? Nod your head if you've heard this. Life gets better. You don't have to, you can be here. Life gets, I don't know. I'll tell you what I, I'll tell you what happened to me. Life didn't get better. I got better at handling life. I acquired more skills. Life got worse. Life got much more difficult. I became better at understanding how to manage the difficulties and unexpected nature of life. So many people struggle with the unexpected. You're an artist. Everybody here is an artist. You must embrace it. This will not be the worst thing that happens to you. You're alive. You're alive. This will not be the worst thing that happens to you. And, the, and why do you think I shared that story, Alexis? Why? Why put it in there? Why tell anyone? By the way, I was alone. Nobody else was around. I remember that day so well. Why share it? Why do you think I shared it? I think just to show that our actions have consequences, like whether someone is there to see it or not. That's right. That's right. I took something. You know, my father, bless his soul, was a, I mean, a total animal lover. If you swatted a mosquito around my father, he would make the sign of the cross and be upset. No lie. I mean, he felt that something was alive. You just killed something that was alive. A mosquito. Can you imagine? So that was part of it, too. I never, I just realized this, Alexis. I never told my father that story. No way. I mean... I can't even imagine how, you know, for him, the, the biggest consequence my father ever kind of um, exhibited upon me was a look. You know, he wasn't, a, wasn't the kind of person to spank you or anything like that. It was a look. You know what I mean by that? There was a look that could be so devastating, and I would carry it. So effective. So I certainly didn't want the look. But I'm glad that you brought that up, Alexis, because I think that it helps me, helps all of us understand these numbers. We're in a world of numbers right now. And I don't want to surrender to that. 14,000, 15,000, I don't know. I'm looking at CNN right now over there. These numbers. And I want to be honest with you that the way I'm saying to Zachary, what I say to Zachary is, because he's 10 years old. He's the same age now that I was then when I did that, by the way. Right? I want him to understand that. Don't become used to the numbers. Don't long for the normal. We're going to go back to normal. I don't know about that. I think we're going to go back to a new normal, a new ecology. But I think that these numbers, this total immersion into loss of breath and loss of life is something that I think your relationship to music might also be your relationship to a type of morality, right? A type of morality. Every note is precious, right? 
And there's something wonderful about that. I mean, I try to sometimes when I'm feeling really bad, I just really, really, as Maggie was talking about, this notion of wanting to escape, I think to myself, you know, so much of my life is public. Go into the room right back there. See that door? That door leads to my bedroom. I close everything. I just start playing. I just start, I start playing for myself and then my father. And then I just start playing and I think to myself, okay, they're saying that every few seconds now, someone is lost. So I play for them. Yeah, I play for them. George, other thoughts, other things. You look very cool. Look at George's background. He's got the headphones, perfectly coiffed hair. George, how you doing? What do you play? Let me guess. Let me guess. Hmm, you look like a string player. Am I wrong? Yeah. Oh, are no. you all string players? Is this a yes. string player? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let me go more deep. Um, I don't think you're a bass player. I don't think you're, I think you're a violinist. Yes. Okay, lucky guess, lucky guess. George, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing well, it's great to meet you. I'm talking with you. I'm doing great. How, what, could I, what else could I be? George, what do you think? What's your thoughts? Um, what you to think? go back on the story, I thought it was interesting because I, like myself, I don't really pay attention to my surroundings a lot, like how much as you did. I mean, I did when I was younger, because when I was younger, um, I used to live, like my parents, when they went to work, I used to be at my grandmother's house, and there was a creek that flowed by, and there'd be a bunch of animals that go by, which kind of reminds me of like now. The house I live in now also has a creek in the back, where like in the spring, like in a week or so, we'll see, I'll see like deers come by, and like drink out of the creek or like something goes on like you just like something active happens and there's a there's a lot of birds here too that also like make noise so like every, all the noises that make like creates this different like environment overall mm. yes the sound of that creek huh mm. yeah what gives you comfort now what do you what what do you turn to for comfort peace um well, really depends. Sometimes it's crazy, sometimes not. Like the other day, I gardened with my parents. Um, and then also the other day, I asked my dad if I could get a car and I could like fix it up by myself. And I don't know, he hasn't said anything about it. So we'll see. You fix the car by yourself? Uh, yeah, get a what? like a vintage car and try to wow. fix it up. A guideline for being online. Number one, test your equipment before your meeting time. The mic, camera, and all other connections can, as a, can usually be tested within the program. You don't want to log in into a meeting and take away from your colleagues trying to fix your connections. Know where things are, such as mute, screen, screen share, chat button, so on and so forth. I think there's a typo right there. Two, be on time and avoid being late. Punctuality is important in an online environment. If you need to take care of family members or others, just let us know or join when you can. We will remain flexible and understanding to your needs. Three, be aware of your frame. Pay particular attention to what we are seeing and hearing when our focus isn't or shouldn't be on you, right? So depending on who you're with, a teacher, a rehearsal, or whatever it is, there can be a certain informality, a certain flexibility, but you also have to be really aware of how there's still energy in the frame, particularly in a gallery view. Right. I prefer gallery view because I can see everyone and I always suggest that when we're in a room together that everyone be in gallery view if possible. Four, be still and aware of your foreground and background image. Moving too much is distracting for us. Use a virtual background if necessary and you can upload any image you want to form your background in Zoom, of course. Have fun with that. Headphones reduce ambient noise and help you hear your colleagues better. Now, there's sometimes where you do want to move. You know, there's sometimes where you actually want to maybe you know, point emphasis. I've talked about scale. Scale can be, you know, really important if you want to make a point or you want to, you know, really get into something or have something to say or, you know, it's, it's a theatrical thing and I think you should be theatrical. You know, you can do things and you can, you know, make things happen in a way, you know, boom, that you can't in the real world or in the virtual world. So even the name, I know it says Daniel Romain there, you can change that every time. You know, I have contributors, every time they come in, don't use your name, use the name of someone you admire or lost or would like to be. So you can change your name, that's easy. You just go into your profile, you change your name, right? In fact, thinking about it, you know, that's uh, in the background there is 
So my grandfather, my father, my mother, my grandmother, I think that's Audrey Hepburn, if I'm not mistaken, for a breakfast at, or maybe Catherine, no, Audrey Hepburn, I think, breakfast at Tiffany's, on the wall, that's my son, son's artwork, all that stuff happening out there. So, um, <clears throat> of course, I'm using this microphone, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, use headphones to reduce ambient noise. Use a mic so we can hear you better. You know, as musicians and as you're moving forward, I would, uh, if you can afford it, and there's ten, twenty dollar mics, USB driven or drive, you know, um, powered, I should say, that sound really good. I think that one of the realities of where we are right now, uh, a mic might be a really good investment. You can create. It's going to make you sound better online in meetings, or any any kind of classroom or you know any situation like this. Um, you're going to use it in the future for sure. Um, so for all of us, it might be a good time to start thinking about those ten, twenty, thirty dollar mics and start using them as an extension of, uh, and controlling our frame. Okay, use blackout when you don't need to be seen. Um, I have some contributors that are sharing apartments or you know they can only go in the bathroom because that's where it's the most quiet. So as I said, you can control your background through framing, virtual backgrounds, I mean you name it, you know um, put your yourself up against the wall. Just be really aware of the frame. Um, excuse yourself if you, if you need to leave your frame. That's always a good idea, even if you put it in the chat. Hey, I'm going to leave for a few seconds. I'll be right back. Be engaged in your mind, eyes, and body. It's very difficult for us to focus if you're not focusing your frame and are obviously distracted. Right? Pay real attention to that. It's really important. Seven, be polite to everyone you can see, can see, and can hear. Right? Some people choose to just have their name shown or they, you know, they cut their screen free. It's totally cool if the, if the person leading the, the uh, room is fine with that. Most importantly, though, be yourself at all times. All right. I'm going to stop the share. All right. It is 9.08, and um, I'm here. Or what would you like to do? I, I don't want to keep you too long because I like things to end, and you're always kind of maybe wanting for more. Any questions, any comments, go ahead and unmute. I have, a, I have okay, two we'll go questions ahead. for go you. Ahead, uh, go ahead. One in, involving uh, your violin. Yeah. You, um, do you switch up like your bow hairs? Like, do you always go with the straight white or do you switch it up? Do you salt and pepper? Do you yeah. go straight black? What do you, what do you prefer most or does it vary? <laughs> uh, it did, well, yeah, it depends on the instrument. So when I'm playing a five, six, or seven string instrument, I use a more coarse hair, and they're generally darker. I think you said salt and pepper. So yeah, I have black bow. You know, I think black might be the coarsest. I'm not sure, but I've got um, I don't know probably probably about, probably about a dozen different bows, all with different grades of hair. Um, a lot of those bow hairs need to be rehaired, quite frankly, and you know can't do that right now. I also have some cheap bows. Um, depending on what I'm doing. I mean, this is probably a, I don't know, $30 bow. Um, it just has a particular sound. You know, that's the thing about it. It's a $30 bow, but I've been playing it for probably close to 30 years, you know, 20 some odd years. And it has a really great sound now. You know, it just, it works in a lot of ways. I think it actually might even be a viola bow as I'm looking at it. Yeah, it might be. Naturally the best sounding. Of course, <laughs> y'all, of course. I should go grab Bernadette. I'm tempted, but maybe next time. I have a seven, no, a six string electroacoustic violin. Well, violin, viola, cello range. I don't know what you call it. <clears throat> well, whatever it is. I call it Bernadette. That's what it says on the back. That's um, sweet. Yeah, it's a really beautiful sounding instrument. That's my mom's name. I'm sorry again? That's my mom's name. Oh, Bernadette. Ah, interesting. Yes. Peace be with you. <laughs> no? Oh, okay. My, my second question yes. is, in your background, speaking of, you have an Emmy. What's that about? Can you see that? Yeah. Whoa. See, you got to know your frame. <laughs> uh, um, wow. To me, that looks so tiny. You guys got good eyesight. If I take my glasses off, I can't, I can't now, now I just look like a beautiful Matisse painting. Um, yes, wow, I'm impressed that you can see, and that's funny, because that's, um, well, yeah, it is an Emmy. That was, um, um, that was something I did many years ago. Um, it was a, um, 
<sighs> it was a documentary on really it was just me in an elementary school actually in um oh what part of town was that somewhere in boston i can't remember it was um not the best part of town at the time which is ridiculous Rochester, mattapan something like that i can't remember man i have the t-shirt i have to go something devils chelsea okay chelsea yeah devils maybe yeah you know everything is changing now because you know in um real estate and you know uh, gentrification does, that's kind of sounds right. Chelsea was that kind of a yeah, Chelsea Lynn Quincy that that kind uh, of ah yeah oh Lynn yeah yeah, yeah I remember Lynn. see that's my kind of town that's I'm, I feel most comfortable there really but of course man okay. Lynn the old Roxbury yeah, yeah that's like yes I'm just yes um, I think it was Chelsea and it was an elementary school oh I remember now it was through the Boston Pops it was with Keith Lockhart that's the whole thing I looked a little different. And they wanted this local PBS crew, WGBA, something like that, followed me the whole week. And what happened was, uh, well, they were supposed to follow me one day, and I got excited. It turned into the whole week, and it turned into a documentary, and it aired, and it kept airing. And it's, I didn't, I had, you know, I didn't do anything. I didn't write, you know, I just, pl well, what I'm doing right now is what I did then. And for whatever reason, this Emmy showed up. <laughs> and it's so funny that you can see that. Because I'm thinking That's... you can't see anything really behind me. What I really want you to see is my son's artwork. I mean, now that wow. That's well, show us show us your favorite uh, piece of his. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, hang on. Oh, I okay. Hang on. Let me go get it. Hang on. It's a good thing I'm not wearing jeans. I'm wearing my workout pants. <laughs> You're like, what happened? You look so well dressed. My mother would be mortified. All right, so this is something. I don't know how old he was. Oh, I have, actually, I have it upside down. Okay, so we have it this way. Let's see if I can just put it in the camera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's, isn't that amazing? And you know, he's three, four years old. And, you know, it's just these wonderful kind of, to me, expressionistic, dreamlike, you know. And he was, doing, he was doing a couple each day. And I got these little Ikea frames, like a dollar. And I, I have had these on the wall since, you know, the last seven, eight years. And I'm going to keep them on the wall because I just think they're beautiful. I hope you, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm sure some of your parents, you'll be surprised what they keep. Oh, I know. You're like, oh, mom, all oh, dad. Yes. But, you know, we just love you so much. And then you change. Daniel, talk about prayers of happiness. Hymns of happiness. William wants to know about hymns of happiness. Oh, well, that turned into riots and prayers. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> yeah, new title. Um, it That's did. A story. That's a long story, but yeah, so it's a new orchestral piece, and that was William Boughton, the great William Boughton, by the way, legendary William Boughton in the background there. Um, that orchestral piece, um, well, I'll say it's, it, it is in the title. I thought, about the, I thought about what is a riot, really, and what are prayers, right? That's, that's the first thing. The, 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 and I, it, what occurred to me was that as I tend to want to go, what are the similarities? What do they share in common? They both, in, they both, well, in the most kind of obvious manner or obvious thing that comes to mind, they involve crowds. They involve um, ritual, right? Um, getting away from maybe what's so obvious about a riot or even obvious about prayers or praying. Um, it's a human expression. Oftentimes, um, in response to something, sometimes cathartic, sometimes not. A meditation that a riot at some. I, don't know if you've ever, I, I would never say to you, go to a riot. But if you've ever been in a situation where people are really upset, a crowd of people, you know, there's. It's a complex thing. There's the there's the moment of, kind of, um, well, depending on how, depending on what's happening, maybe violence or whatever it is. But but then things change and they dissipate. 
and you and, and same thing it, you know if you've ever been to a Baptist church you know Pentecostal church in the south praying praying you know it's different all over the world um, what I what I'm I'll leave you with this. What I'm most excited about that piece is that I came up with something called Town Hall Cadenzas. Two microphones on opposite sides of the stage, preferably in the aisle. You know, you have to work that out with the fire marshal. But two microphones in where you would expect them in a town hall meeting. And as the orchestra plays, there are moments every few, every few minutes, every few moments, every few 30 seconds to a minute where... We, we invite an audience member of anyone to come up to that mic and say anything. 30 seconds to a minute. You know, we work these things out with the audience beforehand. Very simple. I'm glad you're here. We're going to have a town hall cadenza. When you're moved enough, come up to this microphone. When you see the light come on, come up to this microphone. You have 30 seconds to a minute to say whatever you want. And we might have an usher there because, you know, some people might take advantage. But I also believe that two things there. Getting an orchestra to do that is very difficult for many reasons, because I think a lot of um, administrators of an orchestra, a lot of people have fear. What if they say the wrong thing? Of course, my response is, well, what would that be? Tell me what you think the wrong thing would be, right? For me, there is no wrong thing. And there's no wrong thing. Number two, the reason why I think the town hall cadenza is so important is because I think that we're at a time right now where people are really struggling to be heard. They're struggling for breath, but they're struggling to be heard. You know, we can get into the politics of that. That's not what it's, that's not what it's about. Riots and prayers, and that's what I realize. It's what I realize that happens in both a riot and a prayer. It is about spirituality. It is about being heard, connection, community, right? That something is so painful, it makes you want to break a store window. Or that something is so painful, it makes you want to kneel and be contrite, light a candle. So Riots and Prayers is an orchestral attempt using a town hall cadenza where we're talking about trust, we're talking about expression, we're talking about um, vulnerability, right? And, and really what we're talking about is how can an orchestra collaborate with its audience in a meaningful way, a deeply meaningful way? So... Um, Hopefully that piece will premiere with William, which would be great, I think. He's so the perfect person to do it, William and Janet, um, and any orchestra that he's leading. And, um, and uh, hey, maybe, we, you know, the thing about a piece like that, and we could talk about it. I'd, I'd love, you know, what we should be talking about, what I hope happens as a result of our conversation, what are we going to do together, right? What are we going to do together? Because if you think about it, a town hall cadenza can be inserted into any piece. Any piece. What's, what piece were you working on? What piece are you working on? Give, give me a title. What's one of the pieces you were working on? Um, let's see here. A Avisha, did I say that right? Avisha? Yeah, hi, how are you? I'm hi, I'm fine. Avisha, what piece were you working on with your orchestra that you really liked, that you really spoke to? Um, we were working on, I think, New World Symphony. That was like Ooh, one of the newer ones shot. we started right yes. before all of this happened. Oh, wow, beautiful. Well, that would be an interesting piece to think about a town hall cadenza and when it could happen. Yeah, so. Oh, Have you got was... another short piece you could play? Oh, okay. How does it sound, by the way? This is, I'm using this mic for the first time. I think it sounds it's, good. Sound good for everybody? Very clear. You're good. Cool. Very yeah, good. all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've tried, I'm about to try this wireless system and. This is an, oh, so this mic is a AT4033A, an Audio-Technica. It's not that pricey. I'm running it through, um, uh, what is it, third generation M-Box at this point. But it's got great um, warmth. I like it because it's, you know, it's got great warmth in there. There are USB, as I was talking before, uh, who makes it? I can't remember. I have the link. I'm going to be putting a lot of this stuff on my website. There are these great USB microphones that you can order directly from Best Buy or even out, even off of Amazon that will really give you a similar sound. And um, yeah, I think um, you know how we sound online. I'm realizing more and more is so important to how we, you know, look and feel online. Oh, all right. How am I feeling? How am I feeling right now? Um, 
experimenting with my um, wireless my wireless headphones. I think that um, you know one thing that I'm always thinking about I'm really um, I mean I don't know if you know Christian Ho's house H O H O W E S Christian House fantastic violinist we were talking the other day he's doing a lot of stuff online check out Christian House is really great H O W E S um, I'm really concerned about um, uh, extended techniques and tone and just making, you know, the instrument something really personal. Um, so I would say, you know, investigate everything. Um, vibrato is vibrato. What kind of, how many different vibratos can you have, right? You know, this applies across the board, bass, cello, viola. Um, really start to think about how you can make the violin a really personal a really personal statement i think it's so important and um you know i was never going to be that type of violinist i've been watching have you watched uh, itzhak perlman's uh, story time online they're great they, they start i always want to pull one out right now and i think it's on instagram you know he, he's looking right into the camera i think it's on his phone um it's a simple story. It's really, he's a great storyteller, by the way. And then he usually begins or ends with just killer playing, like killer. Like he still got it all there, man. It's just so like wow. Um, but I I hear in his playing something very personal. You know, there's something rooted in his playing that I think is really personal. So I think this is a good time for that. I think it's a good time for as as it brings us right back to the beginning of our conversation with with Maggie. And in some ways with Alexis, I think to, to be really personal on your instrument, you have to be vulnerable, right? You got to fail. Things are not going to work out, you know? And I think the, the I, would, I would urge you to, to have a real relationship with your instrument, you know? I, I started playing this when I was five years old, so 45 years later, this is the one thing I've been doing for 45 years. <laughs> You know, and I'm not saying I do it particularly well or, you know, whatever you want to say about my playing, that's fine. That's not the point. The point is I have a relationship with this instrument that is longer than any other relationship I've ever had. And I, I thank God for that, really. I thank the universe for that. Um, so, you know, what does that mean? That means that, you know, it's a, it's a, like any relationship, it's a journey. And you have time to really think about what your instrument and what your music um, means to you. And um, I forget sometimes just how therapeutic listening to music can be. I forget. 
I forget sometimes just how wonderful it can be to make music with myself. I forget how wonderful it is to make music with others, even online. You know, maybe next time we meet, we're all going to have our instrument, right? And we're going to figure it out. There's many ways to do it, many ways to play online. But, and you don't need a microphone. I mean, it'd be great if you have one, but you don't need one. But, you know, I'll leave you with this. I, 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 I'm always thinking about, you know, one note. What can I do with one note? Um, uh, uh. <coughs> at you looking at me a human gallery this frame can't hold me no captivity here can you see me can you hear me I'm free now statistically if you were black like me you might not be Free. And I'm here to tell you. Joy, love, vulnerability, freedom is in your strengths. Freedom is in your heart. Your imagination are your wings. In my music, in our music, I'm free. much thank you listen have a great night have a better tomorrow we will meet again and uh god bless you the universe bless you peace be with you and be careful crossing the street or shaking hands because we need you <laughs> All right. well, thank you daniel it's always a joy spending time with you and um it's been a lovely evening and you've brought us a lot of joy and inspiration so thank oh. you for giving up your time it's been very special of course, of course. thank you all right. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Daniel. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.